Hey guys, so I'm back with another video. Today we're going to talk about narcissists and how they try to take their perception, their false perception and perspective of you and make it a reality. Okay, so you could be in a, a romantic relationship with someone who's a narcissist. You could have a spouse who's a narcissist. You could have a sibling or a parent that is a narcissist. You could have a, um, a friend, an acquaintance, or a boss who's a narcissist. So whatever scenario that fits your situation, this narc will have it made up in his or her mind that you ain't nobody, you are nothing, you are a failure, you don't have nothing to show for, you are not a success, that you um, are at the bottom and they are at the top, that you are beneath them, when actually it's the complete opposite. Everything, everything that they think of you, it's actually the truth about them. And what they have a tendency to do is they deflect and project on to other people. They take their truths and they project on to others. They uh, deflect on to others. They project, reflect, and deflect on to others. Um, so they'll take what they think of you, what they perceive of you, and how they view you, and they will try to put as much effort and energy into making that a reality so that they can go around claiming this to be true, whatever it is that they think about you. And so that they, so that they can have something to gossip about, okay? So I'm gonna give y'all a scenario. And as a matter of fact, this is a real life situation that actually happened to me. So I'm just gonna share my story with y'all. So my husband, he allowed his mother to get in his ear and convince him that it was best for myself and our children and him to move to Shreveport and leave Austin. We were at the end of our lease. Uh, we could not renew it because the owner was selling. We could not move into a new place because our credit was shot. So we were in a position where we had to pay off the debt before we can get a new place. All we had to do was wait for the tax returns to come in. And that's basically what I was doing. But instead of talking things out with me instead of working things out with me instead of sitting at the table with me and having an adult conversation and saying hey let's come to a mutual agreement here let's let's figure out what we're going to do as a unit he goes and leaves me instead in Austin by myself and he takes the children to go stay out there with his mom and sister for the summer but he leaves me out here in Austin stranded alone in a hotel by myself and he calls himself a real man. He calls himself um, a decent, good person. But what decent, good person and what good man or husband would leave his wife stranded in Austin by herself? So that was a call, but I'm not taking that call. So anyway, um, he's in Shreveport. I'm in Austin by myself waiting on his tax return to come so I can pay off the debt so I can get us a place. While he's out there in Shreveport making plans with his mom, figuring out his life instead of making plans with me, his wife. To make a long story short, I run out of money. I get real sick with my IBS. And he convinces me to go and um, pick up everything and just come down to Shreveport. And he'll help me get on my feet and he'll help me with my sickness and make sure I get better and you know and he was like you know let's work this out as husband and wife so of course I'm in my mind I'm panicking because I'm like I'm running out of money I can't pay for hotels um the tax return still has not come so the only other option I have left is just to go to Shreveport so that's what I did I get there his mother meets me with these mean demonic um nasty vulgar eyes okay so i'm already feeling her spirit it's it's just very ugly and demonic and nasty and just negative just this negative energy okay and so uh i'm there i spend my time there we try to figure out um 
a way to get our own place and move out of his mom's house, right? So months go by, um, you know, we finally are in position to get a place because we've been, we've been filling out applications in Shreveport. And um, I took all my paycheck money that I was getting and just was saving it, just stacking it, not touching it, just letting it stack up. So then we got into the position where we were able to move into a place because we had enough money for the down payment because I was saving the money. Um, but his mother and sister picked out the neighborhood. It was a low down, nasty, dirty drug, um, you know, at the bottom quarters type of neighborhood. It was the neighborhood that drugs and police be running through there. It was a raggedy uh, neighborhood. It was a raggedy street. Um, it's, it was usually one of them kind of streets where it was typically a place that would have a lot of gentrification going on. But in this situation, there was no gentrification going on. There still isn't no gentrification going on in that area. It's just low down, raggedy, it's old, um, and what have you. So his mother and sister picked us out of place over there. And, um, the place itself was nice, but the neighborhood was just not. And um, I guess they think that I'm low down. I guess they think I'm a nobody. I guess they think that this is this is my style of living or my choice of living. They think I, I guess they think I can't afford something more decent than that place. And I guess they had it made up in their mind that since I am beneath them, that I must belong in that type of neighborhood. I must belong in, you know, to that caliber of living. And my husband, him being the weak link in, in their little family circle and listening to everything his mom and sister tell him to do, he has yet to say, you know what, this is not my wife's style of living or even caliber. We don't live this way. We have never lived this way when we lived on our own. This is not the type of um, environment that she prefers. He didn't even speak up for me. He didn't defend me. He didn't say any of these things. He just went along with everything. And they were all like, oh, Shantae, this is this is a real nice place. This is a this is a real nice little area. I mean, it ain't the best, but, you know, it, it's 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 a good place for y'all to start. Like as if this was our very first place or something like as if this was our very first time getting our own place or something like as if like we beginners and we don't know what we doing. Like as if we're the bottom of the scum. You know, like I just I don't understand. I don't get it. And all I can think in my mind is like, what the hell? What on God's green earth are they thinking? No, I'm not staying here. I'm definitely not spending my hard-earned money that I saved on this place. And I'm sure it's not going to uh, bring my children here and, and put my children in this kind of environment. No. So my mind is racing. You know, I'm not speaking out loud, but in, inside I'm just, I'm screaming and dying and like, and I'm running inside, you know, like. Make a long story short, we we get back to his mother's house from seeing the place. My son and my husband's two nieces get into it with my son. Um, the younger uh, boy, which is my husband's nephew and his sister's son, um, get into it over a video game. And then the two older sisters, they defend the little boy and they you know, bully my son and buck up against my son when it's my son's game in the first place. So if your little brother is having him a fit over a game that don't belong to him, that don't mean y'all go buck up against the person whose game it belonged to and y'all try to like, to, you know, like bully the boy into giving the game to y'all little brother. That's wrong. Um, so that's basically what that was. They wanted me to put my son in his place. He didn't even do nothing. They claimed that my son cussed the little boy out, which was a lie. And that's what a narcissist do. They lie so that they can manipulate the situation into going their way or so they can manipulate the result into happening the way that they want it to happen. So they lie. They um, they will attack you. All these kind of things. So they're liars, they're manipulators and what have you. So anyway, they lied on my son and said my son cussed the boy out, which he didn't. And they're, you know, the, 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 my mother-in-law, sister-in-law, they're all, you know, ganging up on me, talking about I need to check my son. And my husband, with his weak self, 
just standing there watching them gang up on me, not defending me, not saying nothing, not saying, hey, that's my wife. Hey, hey, let me talk to my woman. Y'all stay out of it. Let me handle this with my, my wife and her son, you know. Instead of him saying that, he's just sitting there watching, letting them attack me, letting them attack my son. And I'm just like, what in the hell? And then all and all of a sudden, the next thing I know, he on their side and he attacking me too. I'm like, what the hell? So in my mind, I, my thoughts are racing again. And I'm just like, you know what? This environment and situation is hostile. It's just time for me to go. So I pack my bags. I, I purchased me a plane ticket and I used that money that I had saved for stacking for uh, stacking up for a down payment to get a place. But so I used some of that money to get me and my son a plane ticket. We left Louisiana and we flew to California. And the reason for this was because I was frustrated and it just got to a point where I was just like, you know what? It's however many people against two people, like eight people against us two. Nah, I'm just going to get me and my son out of here and we gone. So that's what I did. I spent 60 days um, in California. Um, and there's more to the story, but I'd rather not add because it'll make this video too long. But you guys get the point. Narcissists, they want to control you. They want to scream, uh, play, and direct your the way that your life is going to go. They want to direct you know, uh, how things turn out for you. They, they want to be the directors. They want to be the controllers. They want to be the one behind the steering wheel. They want to tell you, uh, when to go and when to stop. They want to, you know, be the ones to make the decision when the light turn green. They want to, they want to decide how you going to live your life. They want to take their percept, their false perception and, uh, viewpoint of you or opinion of you and they want to make it a reality so that they can go back and gossip about it and talk about you and have something to talk about and so they can take their lies and make them true you understand what i'm saying they won't control they want to they won't they want um they want to have something to talk about they want to have something to gossip about they want to continue to oppress you they want to continue to um, annihilate you. They want to have control over you. They want to. They want to make you their slave. Pretty much, and um, they want to be the directors and the teachers, and um, they want to be the the managers and the and the owners of 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 how your life gonna go, how your life gonna turn out. They they want to pretty much have control over how your life is going to go, how your life going to turn out, how you going to live your life and where you going to be at, how you going to move and when you going to move. It's sickening. It's sad. It's disgusting. That's just them. That's how they are. They're nasty. They're demonic. They're mean. They're evil. They won't control. Control is like food for them or like cash flow for them, you know? Manipulation is a tool that they use to try to take their lives to make them a reality. You understand what I'm saying? They're good at twisting things around and getting in people's head. They're good at playing mind games. They're good at, uh, um, excuse my language, I'm a Christian, but a lot of people say, you know, uh, mind fuck or fuckery. You know, they're good at doing those kind of things. They're good at frustrating you. They're good at getting in your business. They're good at telling you what to do. They're good at stirring up problems, starting problems and creating problems. They don't put fires out. They start the fires. They create the fires. You understand what I'm saying? That's, this is just how they are. This is what they do. This is how they operate. This is how they move. This is how low down they are. This is how foul they are. And they always want to bring you down to their level. And the way that they treat you is really a reflection of how they feel about themselves. So they can have somebody join their boat of misery. Well, I'm going to end the video here. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace and blessings to you all. I love y'all. Peace.